Hello, my lovely friends. Welcome back. Today, the question on hand is to stitch or not to stitch? That is the question I'm asking all of you. And today we are playing with the Kaleidoscope Arch Collection by Spellbinders. This is a four piece collection. It's sitting right here. The focus is this stitched kaleidoscope arch. This is the whole stitched or not to stitch because we have this arched kaleidoscope piece here that has the kaleidoscope pieces, which we will use today that go behind this arch. And you can either add the stitching to your center or, and this is a big or, there are stamps that can be used interchangeably. There are also, they're both sentiments and they're florals that can go in here as well. Then you have sentiments here that can go across here. And I've also brought in a couple of my favorite Better Press um, sentiment strips the Always and Forever Sentiments and the Fancy Sentiment Strips. These are the, you know, my favorite one cut wonders. And when I was foiling the Better Press Plate that is in this collection, I foiled up tons of these sentiments and the ones that coordinate with today's projects we're also using. So the strips of these sentiments are perfect also to go across your kaleidoscope here. You also have this sentiment you can use as well. So I found that very versatile. And I'm gonna show you a bunch of ways to use this today. So you also have a floral set in here. And here on the front, it shows the kaleidoscope being used in one, only half. And then it being used kind of like a flower pot, which I thought was kind of ingenious. This here is called the Kaleidoscope Arch Sentiments, and this was the Stitched Kaleidoscope Arch. Then you have the Better Press Plate, which is the Kaleidoscope Flowers. So you can see it's extremely detailed, and here it is foiled. I did all my Better Pressing foiled today, and I just want to show you the detail of the foiling. Look at all of those little detailed lines there. The foiling just comes out perfect every single time. There's never an overfoil. I, I just, I don't get it. I honestly do not get it how perfect this comes out, but it does. And then I actually reverse foiled a couple backgrounds here that are extras. We're going to be using one of the reverses today. And this was also an extra. So that's our kaleidoscope flowers. And then we also have a really pretty stencil in this collection, the kaleidoscope stencil. So I have also stenciled that one up for a sample. So question to you, stitch or not to stitch? That is the question. We're going to do two of each, and it's your job to tell me at the end of the video which is your favorite technique to use this set stitching or to use to use this set not stitching. Okay, let's start out with a basic stitching card. Now, like I said, we're using a reverse foil. Now, I did this. Um, it's the reverse of this one. And I did it on Spellbinders. It's a it's a really light green cardstock. I don't have the name off the top of my head, but foiling on Spellbinders essential cardstock and their um, brushed cardstocks are a good tip for you for your glimmering. It does work really well, and it does help some with the reverse foiling. I did have pretty good results here with a full reverse. I'm also finding out with foiling that running it through, through two times without even trying to pull it up, run it through, put it back on your glimmer, let it heat up completely again, and then run it through a second time. Don't even peek at it. Don't even, and don't run it through right again. 
heat it up again, run it through. That, my friends, right now is my biggest tip for you. That was really helping the other night. So we're going to use this. Now this, I have already stitched these to save time because it is the basic stitch where you come out of here, you go into the center, come out, go in the center, come out, go into the center. Super simple. I went ahead and used the tape on the back to just be able to do this. I was watching TV, having a nice time watching a movie when I was stitching these up. I did double thickness on my paper just to make sure it was sturdy. Makes the stitching go a lot quicker. And it just looks nicer too. So, and this shape is the Essential Stylish Oval. Fits these perfectly. To If you want the full oval, this is a perfect match. And then you can also, if you want, you can layer it also. So that's just a little tip. So let's go ahead and see how far we want to spread this. I want a nice border around that. And this is the also the same color I did the card base with for the top layer. So let me get, grab my glue. And let's get this layered up. And we will get this down. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? This is actually a reversed foiled sentiment with the white opaque foil on green. Reversed. Interesting, huh? I was trying it all, guys. I was just playing. I don't really like too many. I didn't, I didn't, let's say, let me re rephrase that. I didn't quite like the opaque white reversed on black. It is, because I was doing a lot of black and white sentiments, and the opaque white did not look good on the black, because it's it says it's opaque, but it's not quite solid. So it really didn't, it kind of looked grungy on black when it was reversed. So I decided to do it on green, because I knew I would be working with green. So I did that, and that's how we're coming up with this. So now I will go ahead and put this down on here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and pop this up with some of my 3D foam. Got them in my handy dandy little case here. Let's go ahead and put some of these down. I'm going to put a tiny bit of the liquid glue on these as well right as I or right as I get these this the stickers off of it. Okay, we'll center this right here. You know, until recently, green has never been my color unless it's with purple. But for some reason, I think I'm just ready for spring. I was talking to my girlfriend, Justine. A lot of you may know her over at Stationery by Justine. And her and I are both in a green mood at the moment. We were talking about that the other night. And I don't know what it is, but green is in our blood at the moment. Look at that, that's pretty. Gives it a little dimension. So we'll go ahead and glue this one straight down. And I might put a little bit of bling on this. And I went ahead and used this essential oval in the background specifically on the reverse foil because I wanted to disguise the little bit of foil that was not quite reversed all the way. Oh, I love this. I think popping that up made all the difference in the world. Okay. Oh, I love this. I thought it was so plain and just boring when I was looking at it originally, but I'm really liking it. So I'm gonna grab 
some bling here out of my drawer. This is a pack of bling that I actually bought a long time ago off of Amazon. And I will never use all of these. I don't know what I was thinking, but let me just see what these might look like. Because they got a green tinge to them. And we'll see. I think they're going to pick up the colors around them. Yeah, we'll go ahead and just add these. So I'm going to put a little dot of glue right in that hole where we add our stitching. And we will pick that crystal up and put it right in the hole there. And that'll just add just a touch of glam right there. There we go. Forever grateful. So that's card number one to stitch. Now let's see one without stitching. Let you be the judge. Now this one, I did something a little bit different. I'm going to show you guys what I did. And I'm going to take just one of these from another project and show you what I've done here. I have taken this die cut. When you cut it, this is cutting it without the stitching and this is cutting it with the stitching holes. You can see the difference there. Well, I was going to stitch this one and then when I cut it in the foil, do you see how gorgeous the foil detail and the lines and everything make that? It's so pretty. You don't even have to stitch it. Well, then that gave me an idea that if I cut this and cut this little portion off on both of them, then I would be able to make a circle. So this makes, if you overlap one of these, let me get a little closer. If you overlap one of these here with the other on the end, it makes an exact circle. So how I did that is I cut it straight and then I notched it just a little bit right here. And on this first one, I cut through and I was like, uh-oh. So on this second one, I just curved it there. Instead of going straight towards it, I just kind of dipped and kind of came up. And that way I wouldn't cut the, the little, what are those called? The little, um, yeah, eclipse, I think it is. I didn't cut through. So this one's going to be my top one. And that way I disguise the one that I cut through. So we're going to go ahead and glue that on top. And we're going to use this like as a medallion in the center of our card. And you're still going to have all that detail from those embossed lines that are there so that you'll stitch over them. So let me just line these two eclipses on either side on top of each other. Now the stitching holes do not line up in the center or you could stitch it. Now, you probably could stitch it if you pierce that hole in the center. It might not be perfect lines, but I bet you, you could still stitch it if you wanted to because they're not going to be far off, but you might see the line here. I mean, if you stitched it and then put a banner over it, you probably would never know. But I didn't in this case because we're not stitching this card. <laughs> this is a not stitch card. So, now, when you get to this point, you have options. I'm going the easy route on this card, but let me show you some options. You could bring in your uh, everlasting circles and layer it up there in the center for your sentiment to be stamped on, or a die cut if you have a die cut sentiment and you want to put a sentiment there. Or you could use something like this which is the postage edge circles. If you have something like this or just any other brand of circle dies in your stash, you might have a scallop or you might have something with a detailed edge like this, something similar, you know, ornate that you could then 
put on the inside here to where you still have this design and you still have the piercings, but then you want something in here that you then stamp your sentiment on or put your die cut sentiment on for that center. But for today, we are just going to make it super simple and we're going to put one of these um, fancy sentiments, which I foiled in pink, and we're going to put that across it like that to hide the line, which will make this a versatile way of using this arched die even differently. And this almost makes it look like a sunburst. And I loved these fancy sentiment strips because that has the point, the point that the eclipse has on the edges. And it covers up my line, my meeting line for my circle, but it also still has that sunburst in the background where those stitching, you know, that's your guiding lines where your, your thread goes. But who would ever think that that is a stitching die? Because it just looks like you have some eyelet and you have a sunburst. So that's gonna be my focal on the card. So we're gonna turn that over, and I think I'm gonna pop this up too, just for fun. Just for fun, because this whole background of this card is flat, though it is very glimmery. We will go ahead and still pop this up for interest. You could also use some ribbon on here if you wanted to. You could add your florals in this collection if you wanted to. But my focus for this card was to show you guys how versatile this die was. Because to me, this die is like a showstopper. And I could have gone on and on playing with this set. Do I want to put it up here? I think, I think I'm going to put it right in the middle. That way we can see these big flowers. Because I really like that top flower. So I think I'm going to put it right there in the middle, popped up. Okay. So here is card number two. So, to stitch or not to stitch? That is the question. Now, we've got two more. Two more cards. Now we're going to get into the flowers a little bit. This one here, I have foiled the background again. And this time I did pink on pink for a more subtle foiling and then to just bring it out a little bit I used navy for the background so then I did the eclipse piece only part way like it shows on the cover of the packaging and I did use white and then the metallic mirror card there on the eclipse inside and let's see if I can get that closer so you can see exactly what it's supposed to look like isn't that cool, the eclipse effect? I really like that. And I'm going to show you how to do that on the last one because it's a little tricky. So I'm going to show you that in just a minute. So we've got that there. We're going to put a million thanks on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue that on there. Right across here. And on this one, I went ahead and chose a DMC that kind of coordinates with my um, my foil on this card because I wanted it to um, really stand out. My foil cardstock, the mirror cardstock is what I mean. Okay, so and I think I'm going to go ahead and just glue this one straight down. Okay, so I'm going to put this one down on the bottom half. And I purposely have not taped down that sentiment because we're going to tuck those flowers in there because we're doing this like the front example where this is our little flower pot. I just love that eclipse effect on there. That is so cool. So I've made our little flowers. So you've got three styles of flowers plus you have a leaf here very super simple to layer up and then we will just st 
stack those right inside our flower pot for a super simple card. This is So, and of course you could change all the colors up and make them lots of different colors. I was going specifically for a color theme here with all my cards. So that's the reason I limited my colors choices on these. So there's that one, card number three. And then on this one, I wanted to show you how to do the actual eclipse. It was a little tricky. I was kind of surprised by it. So, because if you notice, this is not the full piece. It doesn't go all the way around. So I was like sitting here like, um, hello, what am I missing? So let me show you first what we need to do is hook the pieces together. Now I've already done those two and I'm putting the navy on top. You want to put the larger hole on top of the smaller hole. So we're going to do that super quick. Just going to put a little bit of glue on here and then slide this one into place. Probably should have done the gluing in the opposite order, but that's okay. We're all amongst friends, plus it's foil, so the glue slides right off, which is wonderful. This colored foil, by the way, is from Tonic Studios. If you like fancy foils, mirror card, glitter card, I love me some Tonic Studio Craft Perfect specialty cards. If you like your different colors and stuff, that's where my go-to place is. And that's what this is from. So there is that for that. So now, what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to take your little scissors and you're going to slice just a hair, just a hair off of there. Now that's going to be at the top of the arch. Okay. So in this case, it's the bottom of the arch because this is the bottom piece. But I'm looking at the arch like this when I'm working with it. So, so now you're going to glue this in place here. Okay. So it's better to glue from this. So let's see. Okay. So I'm gluing on this side. So I'm just going to put glue on the tips here about halfway around. And then I'm going to glue there. And then we're just going to put this completely on here. This was the easiest way I found to do it. So hopefully this will help somebody. That's my goal here is to make it as easy as possible. Okay, so we're halfway there, right? Okay, well if you notice, if you try to put this one on here, first of all you're going to have an extra one down here, and second of all it's not always going to line up properly. Now, 
if you wouldn't have sliced that little bit off there, it would not have lined up at all. But because we sliced that, it's now, the points are now lining up. But they're still off just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and slice just a hair off of this one. And I'm talking about a sliver, just a sliver. And then when you match this up here, it's going to fit to where nobody is going to see it behind the tips because you don't want anyone to see it that the front is supposed to be white and then you have your eclipses in there so and you want them all to line up properly which is the goal so that's what you're looking for you're looking straight in and you want to make sure they're all lining up for you and then you're going to cut off this one on the end And that, my friends, makes it fit. So then we'll glue this. All along here. And I always glue it from looking down into the eclipse so you can make sure it lines up properly. And, you know, facing so you can see the tips and you can see the insides of your eclipse. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. See that? So now both ends here are even and there's nothing overhanging. So now when you go to put these two together, thanks so much. Now I'm ready to put the card together. So we'll move that over. Here is the beautiful stencil. And because that stencil was a six by six, I had extra. So I went ahead and put the extra inside the card, which I always think makes it look so continuously nice when, for the person opening it. also gives them that nice feel inside the card. So I went ahead and did that. So we'll go ahead and put these down. We have a larger sentiment this time. Let's see, do I want to use... This one kind of went off the edge. Just say, hello, thanks so much. Let's see what this one says. A million thanks. Happy birthday. I think I'm going to use the just saying hello. I have more space here because I'm using the wider sentiment. So I actually can leave them butted up against each other and not layer them. So that's great. So we will go ahead and glue this straight down then. We'll just butt those up together. I just love the versatility of being able to either, I could have stamped the flowers in here from the stamp set, or the two different sentiments that can go in here, or I could double up on sentiments like I'm doing. Oh, I just love the points of this set. This is the fancy sentiment strips again. I didn't realize I was going to love it much until I started assembling the cards. I love the way it goes with these eclipses. And then the points also in the, look at that. Isn't that cool? I just love that. Okay. We're going to so probably then... use one of these. And we'll put this one up here. And do something like... that on the other side my idea here was just a small something something on either side something like that Something like that, just something, something. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue these on here. And then I have got some crystals pulled out 
for the centers of those pink ones. We put a little bling on it. We will put this medium one right here. And we'll put that one right there. So there we go for thanks so much. So here again to stitch or not to stitch. So let's take a look at all of them to stitch or not to stitch. That is the question. To stitching, to not stitching. Which is your favorite? Let me know down below. Bye-bye, friends.